China, just to begin with. Um, I think I should probably change. Um, <laughs> so, we'll go for the Chinese shirt. Um, <laughs> China has a lot of problems with IT outsourcing and offshoring. Uh, in fact, they don't have any in individual trade body that represents the industry, and that's a big problem. There's no NASCOM equivalent. You know, we've all seen that uh, NASCOM in India since the 80s representing the industry. And one of the biggest problems I find talking to a lot of Chinese companies is uh, that the regions and the cities compete with each other and almost talk each other down. Um, and it, it, you know, it just doesn't feel good and uh, it's, it's becoming a problem for them. So India, so that's Mumbai, I was out there um, a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> so um, India, it's the leader. I mean, it's much bigger. It's you know, if you want IT, then India is is basically the place to go. I mean, this this is uh, clearly the leader. However, a lot of the companies are struggling to deal with the shock of this recession. You know, they've really seen hyper growth. Um, <coughs> they've been they've been used to hiring tens of thousands of people every year, and suddenly they find that you know they're not getting new business, um, and and they're struggling. I mean, for the very large players. They can just stop hiring. You know that's easy. Um, but I think that really what you're seeing in the IT and service sector is a lot of the second tier and third tier companies are really going to struggle to get through this. So Russia. So we'll go through the same drill. Um, Russia has got a huge number of very very talented people. I mean, especially in um, you know very detailed engineering work. Um, I mean, the, the space program historically left a lot of people with very well educated uh, engineering and science. Um, but the problem is that you know, if you're now sort of investing overseas and you want to work in, uh, with a company or to locate your own offshore center somewhere, then um, the, uh, the saber rattling and the belligerence of the government just doesn't make it look a very attractive place at the moment. Um, I think it's going to be quite difficult to, to bring people in and make them feel that Russia is a really attractive place to do business at the moment. So, uh, hang on, that's the, uh, <laughs> that's, that's the, uh, the more politically correct Brazil one. <laughs> of course, that was the first thing I thought of when I thought of putting a Brazil picture. Um, and Brazil, I mean, I think that I've done this in reverse because I think that Brazil is, is, is out of the four it's probably the most interesting right now at the moment, um, mainly because it's got a very long, deep, established and mature IT market. Uh, they've got, I think, more COBOL programmers in Brazil than any other country in the world, apart from the United States. Uh, you know, it, the, the industry there's been working for decades. It's still growing at about 25% a year at the moment. Uh, and there's, there's nearly two million people there working in IT alone. So I think that it's, it's been a sort of silent giant, actually, in this sector. They focused a lot on exports to the United States. Uh, and I think you'll probably start seeing them exporting services to Europe much more than you've seen in the past. So some of the other issues I just wanted to bring up. Um, knowledge services. And we've seen this, this thing a few years ago. Everyone started talking about KPO. KPO was where the uh, service sector was going to develop, you know, knowledge process outsourcing. Um, you know, we don't want to do call centers anymore. We don't want to, um, uh, we don't want to process insurance claims and do all that sort of basic stuff. We want to be in there working with the investment banks and uh, uh, doing very high-end analysis on stocks and shares. Uh, but the problem that a lot of those entrepreneurial startups seem to forget was that to do that kind of high-end work, you need a lot of trust. The client has to trust you. And you have to be able to sell your own competence and basically not make a mistake because it's going to cost a lot. Um, so I don't know if there's any of those startups that are still around actually that, that are really you know focused on KPO as, as a separate business. But certainly uh, the same old the old you know the old business practice of going in doing the basic stuff and then winning the trust of the people is basically the way it's going to be. And then innovation. Um, I put this up here. This is you know. Radioheads in Rainbows uh, album where you could purchase it and choose your own price. I think that really we're guilty in the IT industry quite often of um, 
being subservient to the client all the time. You know, we're always um, selling to the client and the client is king. Um, but one of the things that I think we often forget is that you know, every company needs technology. They're basically built on technology now. And we should be the expert advisors helping them uh, improve and change their business. I mean, if you look at something like British Airways, they couldn't function without BA.com now. Um, and look at a company like HSBC, they've got more than one in three of their staff is an IT person. So, you know, is it an IT company or is it a bank? Um, you know, I think that certainly we're guilty quite often of um, not being the, uh, the tail wagging the dog. We should certainly consider that we're the IT experts and we should be able to advise on processes and, and help these companies to innovate better. And so um, in the public sector, um, there's a big problem. You know, the government's uh, borrowing so much money at the moment that whichever party wins the next election, they're both going to have to have huge cuts uh, in public services. So I think that um, at the moment, in the last year, there was uh, 175 billion pounds that was borrowed. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> I put it on silent, you know. Uh, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, um, Peter says that uh, if the Labour Party wins, they won't cut as much as the Tories. So, um, <laughs> if, um, but the point really is, I think, that... Um, the government has having these endless efficiency reviews and they're looking at stuff like outsourcing as a way of saving money and changing the way they deliver services. Uh, Hillary mentioned a couple of them, Gershwin, <coughs> the Reed review. I mean, Reed's was this year, uh, you know, another big review of how we can save money and deliver services. And the bottom line was uh, over the next three years, we could possibly save about seven billion pounds if we smarten the way that we do our IT. Um, but, you know, it's like a drop in the ocean compared to the 175 billion that was um, borrowed in the last year. So the problem there is you have to fundamentally change the way that you're delivering services within government. And I think that we will have to see some big, big changes. So green. Green is another big issue that's coming up time and time again. Uh, the environment. Uh, you know, a few years ago we had Al Gore telling us that the, the world was about to end. And, and every company suddenly started becoming very green friendly and uh, eco-conscious. And then all that kind of got forgotten. As we hit the recession, everyone just wanted to survive and, uh, and sort of dropped all this <coughs> stuff. But next April, the um, government's launching their carbon reduction commitment. So, you know, you as a big company, you'll be forced to reduce your carbon use. Uh, it'll be mandated uh, and, and forced upon you. So um, it's going to happen, whether you like it or not. And that really affects everyone here. I mean, everyone involved in the supply chain in one way, whatever sort of services you're delivering, you're going to have to change the way that you're doing that. And then the, uh, the one-man bands. We keep looking at the, uh, the small companies. Uh, you know, why are small companies not doing any outsourcing at all? And it's sort of quite simple. Um, you know, we see this problem on both sides that uh, on one side of the world, you've got a small company that needs a particular service that they can't find. They can't find that service. Because, you know, if I'm, a, say, a small retailer and I want to buy some IT service, I'm not going to go to IBM and commission them to build the system for me. Because IBM, I don't want to be the 10,000th customer of IBM. Um, I want to find someone of a similar size. So there's systems out there. There's, uh, you know, there's my own uh, thing that I'm working on at the moment, Peerpex which is like a social network for small businesses to connect to each other internationally. Uh, you know, but there's, there's things other people are doing as well. Alibaba is a good example. Um, but the idea is that you can use the connectivity uh, of the internet to, to allow smaller companies to connect to each other. And then looking forwards into the future, you know, and some of the things that are really changing, um, the crowd, and the consumers and social media, I think, will become really important, even in this, this market. You know, I know that um, I talk to a lot of company, 